Welcome to Surviving Mars. We're going to have a nice chill playthrough and I'll show you the simplest way to start and set up your colony and then play through from there. I'm just going on the uh, defaults that we find here on Mission Setup and the default for the rocket payload. And uh, let's choose a, a landing spot. So we'll just uh, pick a nice simple simple one. This one has got a um, difficulty rating of 190 uh, with like an even mix of metals, concrete and water and um, plenty of hazards. So let's start and um, check it out. Welcome to Mars. Here we go. So here's our starting sector. 591 concrete, 54 metals and there's some underground metals there as well. Now we have started with four orbital probes so we'll use these straight away to explore the regions around it and we'll see what we've got. So we've got one, two, three instances of water. We've got two concrete here, a couple of metal and there's an anomaly there that we can check out. And there's some, some precious metal there that can be used later in the game for uh, trading back to earth for more money. So let's zoom in and pick our landing spot. Looks like a great area to start. Really you want to be looking for concrete because you're going to need that to build everything and, uh, and water is critical because that's going to keep everyone alive in the domes. Let's pick our landing spot. Somewhere around here in the middle of the all these resources will do. Let's uh, watch our rocket land. Here we go. So we'll see, uh, we'll see it land onto the surface and then um, once it's landed it's going to um, show us some of our cargo. Here it is. And here we go, here's our vehicle. So we've got our RC commander. That commands the drones. We'll put them over here. We've got our explorer who can check out the anomalies. And remember that one we saw first of all. There it is. We'll go and scan that anomaly. And then our RC transport. It's going to be collecting the, the metal from the surface, which will help us with building. And we certainly want to be getting um, concrete extraction up and running as soon as possible. But also, if you check out what we've bought from Earth, we've got two sterling generators. So we'll set them up over here somewhere. Uh, there's one and there's two. It's going to provide us the power to start off. And uh, also we need somewhere to store all the stuff we've bought from Earth. Um, so we've got lots of polymers and electronics and things. So we'll, uh, we'll build a universal depot so we can unload the, the rocket. So it's under the storage section. The universal depot can only really hold um, 30 of each resource, so not many, uh, but it can, it can be a good start to, to get everything, everything going. Now let's build a specific depot for metal because we're collecting it already. We'll put it there for no particular reason. And once our transport here is collecting metals, which we've got three already, uh, from these um, deposits on the surface, it can take it over to here where it can store up to 180, so that's better better storage by far. Now we certainly want to set up a concrete extractor because that's how we're going to be um, building everything really. So it's over here and uh, let's lay that down and get extracting. So we'll put it there and uh, we'll need to link it up to the power supply. So here we go power cables and we'll bring them all the way from this generator and in a straight line as possible. Ooh, just saw a meteor impact up there. And we'll bring the power all the way down to our concrete extractor. Fantastic. So I think that power cables kind of act as roads in a way um, that the other building games work because you can build um, buildings onto them. But there's obviously no traffic through them. It's just um, a way of placing your infrastructure. So here we go. Now if we check out our sterling generators up close, um, it's producing power, um, 10, 10 power each. But if you open them up, it increases the power produced, but it does leave it vulnerable to dust contamination. So that's dust storms and also when, um, when the rocket takes off. So let's open them up and we'll have a nice close up view of that. Let's check it out, boosting our power. And once these two are open, we've got 40 power, which is a huge amount to start off with. So very happy with that. And they just want to be plugged into things to start off with. I'll see if we can just hook them up to each other um, with another power cable. There we go. 
that'll do. And once this um, power cable's built and the concrete extractor is up and running, we'll start our building materials um, coming in. So what we need to do um, to support the concrete extractor is to have a concrete depot so we can store everything close by and store lots of it. So here it is and we'll put it, where should we put it, rotate it round I think. Could just have it just outside the building, that'll do. So we've got a nice short distance to go. And actually as a result of the uh, concrete extraction we will be producing some, some waste rock. So we need a large dumping site and quite often I, uh, I will put this quite far away from the, um, the concrete extractor but I'll, I'll put it nice and close uh, on this game just so they don't have far to go and we'll just see how that helps with efficiencies. And we'll put it over this side, um, not for any particular reason but there it is. Okay, looking good. now. Let's see what else we need to do. So we've got our concrete for building, uh, but what we do want to do, oh, let's quickly activate some research actually. Um, so here we go, we can increase the um, the rocket cargo space by 10,000 kilograms, let's do that one first. Um, this improves our drone hubs, um, so you get two extra drones and the, and the maximum number of drones is increased, so we'll do that. Physics, this improves our, our extractor um, production by 25% but also includes the, um, the consumption of power but we'll go with that and then biotech um, new building farm so we'll, that'll open a farm up and then this one oh yeah so th this will give us more applicants um, on earth who want to join the mission and that's important but we'll, we'll show you what that that involves later when we start to, start to bring colonists to the um, to the sector because they'll, they'll have different specialist specialisms and so on, and that's quite important. So we've got we've got five uh, research projects stacked up, and that's the maximum you can have. And I'll just check everyone's busy. So here's our RC commander. We'll put him in the middle. Um, you can see the zone of influence once he sort of sets down. Anomaly analyzed. Milestone. Here we go. Uh, that's everything within this sort of zone. That's what, where the drones can be directed to. So, yep, that's good for now. And actually, to improve the management of the drones, I've got a drone hub here. Now, if we zoom out a bit, this gives us influence over the drones in, in this sort of area. And, and we just want to... Yeah, we place it down somewhere there. There will do. And we'll hook it up to the power. Um, this transport's still collecting metal, so that's brilliant. And we've got 16 metal already, and um, 15 yet to, to put in. And we've got a few um, drones collecting a bit of metal as well. So that's good. And one thing we can get going straight away, while well, we've got the chance early on, is do some la landscaping. So we'll, we'll f flatten all this land um, around here, and I'll, I'll explain why we're doing that so early on. Because we want to build our... Our, our domes around the water sources, so this will just give us plenty of build area. And what you can do is set this to low priority, um, so whenever the drones don't have anything to do, they can just go and go and flatten a bit of land. And they may produce a bit of waste rock, or they may put um, a bit of the waste rock in to raise the uh, the area or flatten, depending on what they're doing. So we'll see. And okay, yeah. So that transport's gone over there to. to to collect some more metal. Now what I want to do is build a landing pad um, because we need to bring in supply, supplies pretty smartish from Earth because what we don't have, I'll we'll just leave a gap in between that and the, the dumping ground in case we need to run a cable or something up. What we don't have is a, um, is a, a, a way to make fuel. So if I show you on the build menu, where is it in production? Here we go, fuel refinery. Uh, but what we do have is a water evaporator, uh, and that's going to help us make the fuel. So let's put it. Where should we put the, the evaporator? Around here. We can join it up to the um, to the drone hub, actually. So let, let's just uh, connect that by by power cables first, and then, yep, yeah, that's a nice. Oh, would have been a bit of a straight line. There we go. That'll do. That's connected it. And um, yeah, we can put our fuel production along here. So let's get our water evaporator uh, up and running. Here it is. And then once we send for a resupply, we'll, we'll get our fuel production around here. And we'll need a fuel depot as well. So looking good. Now, if we have a look over here, we've got 0 out of 10 concrete. Uh, but we've got two in stock, three in stock, and our concrete extractor is now running. So the, the building materials will be delivered over to that um, 
landing pad very shortly and then we'll, we'll be, be able to bring in more supplies and so in the meantime let's send for, for that rocket so in prefab buildings we want to go for let's have another couple of drone hubs but this is what we want we want the fuel refinery we didn't have that on our our first sort of default ship uh, it takes up a lot of room but um, we can easily send for it now we've got the option of um, bringing in uh, electronics factory, polymer factory, machine parts factory but we won't do that just yet because we um, we don't quite I mean they need manning by by colonists so we need to set up our our colonists first and, and get a habitable had a habitable area <laughs> try saying that uh, let's bring in another transport so we can collect more metal let's build it another explorer we'll bring that one in and I um, don't know if we really need an RC commander if we've got more drone hubs let's get a load more drones it's certainly gonna help us um, speed up building projects and so on and we can certainly we could do with a couple of orbital probes and um, use the rest of the money for these these things here, polymers, machine parts and electronics there. We probably need to keep bringing those in for a little while until we get self-sufficient. Um, okay, let's launch this uh, resupply mission and we'll bring it in here. And, um, once we set up our our fuel uh, refinery, we'll be able to fill this ship up with, with some fuel and then send it back to Earth. And then what we can do is bring it, bring them back up here. So we'll just free up this area so I'll build another um, landing pad it's at the beginning here and we'll put it on an angle, I quite like the angle, it gives you more space we'll put a space in between them to run cables if we need to so that's good and when we send this one back to earth we'll need to shut down our sterling generators uh, because they're susceptible to the dust that it'll produce when takeoff so um, okay brilliant, we're making our moisture evaporator there and we've got our, our drone hub here is looking good. Just got one little bit to build there, that's why it's showing the um, power sign. I think they'll build that shortly and there's no hurry. Yep, our commander is covering the whole area still. Okay, looking good. Now we've got... how much have we got? We've got three concrete in in storage, two concrete there, so... and the ship is 10% of um, along the way um, to, to Mars so it's not far away let's just increase the speed a bit then and we'll get that ship in and uh, what we can start doing now is building our our water generator from this patch of water so let's check it out in the life supporter zone water extractor put it right in the middle there we go we've laid it down and um, power cables they're not just going to run vertically down they do um, go at an angle so we'll see if we can get a nice angle on that one and link it up to the power grid and we could um, link it up to the left-hand side as well to create, um, you know, a, a, a real grid in the in the sense of the meaning of the word. Because if one if one branch is cut off, then it would still have power um, in another direction, and that can happen when when we get hit by meteors. So that's something to consider. Um, very important indeed. Okay, we're looking good. Our drain hub is up and running. And look at the command zone now. And here's our orbital view, our view from a distance. There's a nice view I'll show you when it gets dark as well. Actually I could show you now the view that we've got. This is what our little drones are seeing and we're seeing. What an amazing view of our colony and the surrounding mountains. Looking good so far. Quite like looking at, at our setup from this angle. It is. So we're just building our water extractor and once we've built our water extractor we will need to store the water so we'll build a water tower as well. We'll just put it down next door that way it's um, easy to lay the pipes and then we can have our our first dome around this area. Now a dome will cost around 80 concrete um, including you know some other materials as well so we'll save up for that we won't be too far off. We're 57% of the way through um, receiving a a resupply rocket but we have built our first landing pad and here it says a dedicated landing site that protects nearby buildings and vehicles from dust during rocket landings and takeoffs so it's important to have that nice clean zone. Although we, we've built our water tower straight off that maybe that was a prefab building or just an easy one to, to 
build and we'll connect them together when we've got the um, the, the water extractor built. Okay, yeah, we are just waiting on concrete. We'll give that high priority then, because the uh, the landing pad can have lower priority. Because um, we, you know, we've not got a need for a second pad for a while. And it does have concrete there already. So that doesn't matter. Because the next item we need to build is going to be our oxygen generator. So let's lay them down and check it out. And uh, the, the shadows coming over tell me we we may be entering into uh, night time soon. So here we go, Moxie produces oxygen, no production during dust storms. Worth noting, so that's why it's so important to have um, like storage to keep you going. We'll put it there, along here, along this power cable. And our ship's nearly here, so we better quickly lay down an oxygen tank. And uh, I quite like it, sort of horizontally like that. Make it all look nice and neat. Okay, so we've got the foundations of something very exciting, very interesting. So once we've got our fuel refinery, we'll put it there. And we'll be able to start refueling this ship. And then we won't be far off being able to build a dome. We'll build it down here to start off with so we can link all our resources. I guess we could have put them all in a row to make it a bit easier. We'll need power, we'll need oxygen, and we will need water linking to our dome. And look, we've flattened all this area. So what we can do... Oh, look, our ship's here. So you just click on it and then um, put it over your landing pad and bring it in. Now, when it comes in, we're going to be having all of our drones uh, unpacking it. We've got some vehicles coming. Select a sector to scan. Oh, you know what we haven't put down yet? One thing that's important to do is to have a sense of tower. That means we can explore the area around us um, a lot quicker. So look, put the sense of tower down there and we'll get that built. Look, we've got our new rocket in from Earth with our resupply. We've got a couple of new transports, so we'll start collecting that metal. And we've got an explorer there for, for later in the game where we can send them off to places and do things. We've got a couple of um, orbital probes that we can un uncover a couple of random sectors quite far away which is quite fun to do. And look we just need to link all these up with pipes which we'll do in a moment and we'll build our, our fuel extract, our, our fuel refinery. So let's go and get that up and running. Here we go. And we'll just uh, position that so it's easy to link up. There we go, right next to the moisture evaporator. We'll link them together when they're when they're built. So we'll link these together now with pipes. There we go. Those two should do it. And the way you know that you've connected something is that there there is a pipe going into each item and that is doing it, so they'll be built. And we'll do this one as well so we can start storing the water that we were making. So one over there, yes, they're all connecting. Okay, this is looking good. And look, our ship on our new launch pad, that one's made as well. And we're going to be um, producing concrete for, for our dome, so we need 80 concrete. Um, that won't take long at all. We've got 82 metal already, which is fantastic. We're producing oxygen, and um, we certainly will be producing water once these are linked up. So those are our main resources. This is built now. This is our fuel area where we can build our fuel up. So we'll link them with pipes and then there's another important thing to do. I wonder if that will link them. Yes it will. I wonder if I wonder if just one of those pipes would do it. That pipe. Oh yes it does. Fantastic. Okay, I'm happy with that. Neat pipes. Very important. Okay, so we need um Right, let, let's bring... Just thinking where to put the power cables. We can bring them up and round and along once we move this ship. So we could build a fuel depot here, or we could build our... We could bring our cables down here and across, which might be nice. Let's just see if that fits. It's, it's nice to link up the power grid. It builds in redundancy and, and gives you um, options. Oh yes it does, L look at that. Okay, got to do it that way for sure. That's very nice and neat, that circle. Apart from this bit around here I'm not extremely happy with, but hey, we can't have it our way all the time. Oh, very nice. What we need to build is a fuel depot. 
Oh, we've got a sterling generator that we bought from Earth. We can pop it over there. So uh, it doesn't mean that we've got our power in, all in one area. And we, here we go, we're producing water, oxygen, we've got lots of power, and we've nearly completed our next research project. We're doing well, folks, and we're probably just about to build our, our dome very soon. Very, very soon. I'll put down a fuel depot for any excess fuel. There we go. In there's nice, right next to it. And that can hold uh, 180 fuel. We are producing, so this ship has now got 16 out of 50 of the, the fuel that it needs. And once that reaches 50, we'll send it back to Earth, and then we'll, we'll release this sort of build area to use for whatever we want. And what we'll do is um, we'll put some water production out there. And um, this area down here, you can see um, if we build domes around here, it'll improve the comfort of all residences when in the radius of, of, of a dome. So that's going to be interesting. So we'll certainly... Um, look to do a bit of terraforming over here and flatten the land because we'll build around there for sure. Also we can do some more terraforming uh, around here. Flatten the land so we've got more more space to build domes and um, yeah looking good. Very happy with the setup so far. Now we're saving up concrete so we've got 23 concrete so far. We'll just speed up the game a little bit so we get that concrete coming in quicker. And we'll just see what is involved with um, building the dome and what our options are. So here, here we do get a self-sufficient dome already, uh, which gives you everything you need. Um, so the, the oxygen production, two moisture evaporators, water tower, oxygen tank, food depot, power cables and pipes. But that just seems a bit easy, too easy to me. Oh, look, we've got... Um, some sort of option that's come up here. Diminishing returns. One of the leading companies in the field of nanotech and miniaturization has made you an interesting offer. They want to outsource the R&D of their newest project, Prefab Compression, a tech that could potentially allow us to transport prefabs of monumental buildings from Earth. Oh, that sounds interesting. They have a list of specific requirements, which makes us the best candidate. Our colony is remote, far from prying eyes, almost depopulated in case of nanite contamination and you could hardly break an agreement of confidentiality. This is interesting, so we can decline. Seems like there may be a bit of risk here. Accept and request an advance, so we could get 500 million and it reveals the breakthrough prefab compression research. Accept and request logistics aid. We would gain 150 research and it reveals the, reveals the, um, the breakthrough prefab um, compression. So we don't really need um, the money. Um, so we'll just go for the research because we've got so much money. Let's gain the research and let's get, gain this breakthrough. See what it involves. Uh, it may be that we can't use that break, breakthrough for a while. Um, but we'll go for that option anyway. Oh, and what we can do is start scanning sectors now that we've got our... So just left click on the sectors around us, queue them up, so we've got nine all together, and that's our, our sort of sensor building, our sensor tower. It's going to uncover those sectors and what they what they have in them. So that'll be interesting to see. Okay, wow, look at our colony. It's looking very nice. We've got 131 metal, 32 concrete. We've got lots and lots of money. We've improved our research. We're 24% of the way to the next one. Lots of power. 27 out of 50. So that extra sterling generator has helped us. And we'll open it up for even more power. And we've got lots of oxygen and water. Let's check it out. So this is uh, full. So we've got 100 water there. And stored oxygen here is 99. So that's looking pretty full as well. Stored oxygen is looking great. Plenty of materials, although not a lot of fuel. But we've got our fuel refinery, so we're building it up. And we got 33 out of 50 fuel on this rocket, so not far from sending that back to Earth. Now we can start to think about building our dome. So I think we'll have it here. We'll need to bring power to it, the water, and the oxygen, so let's do it. Let's build a dome. Let's build a basic dome, and then we'll see what we can put Sector in it. Scanned. Oh, we've just um, scanned a sector 
first one with our Taug, 2,000 concrete or more, 49 metal, 1,500 um, more metal that can be mined. I think if we put our first dome here, we can get all the resources to it nice and easily. Shall I do it? Done. Okay, we've laid it down. We'll just wait for it to be constructed and there's quite a lot to go. Look at all the drones bringing stuff. There we go, stacking it up in the middle. So a lot of that will involve concrete. And um, so we've got the poly to polymers and the metal and then um, lots of concrete to go. But that'll come in time. I guess we could build um, more concrete extraction up here. And we've got some out to the side here, haven't we? This is the big deposit that we've revealed. Whoa! Big meteor at, um, dropping there. Let's do some more terraforming while we wait for our dome to be built. So it'll give us so much more land to expand out to. So we can expand out this way, I think, and this way. And if we actually if we expand out this way, we'll be able to go towards the the comfort bonus. And this is my, one of my favourite um, parts of the day. Actually, we've got the shadows coming over the colony. And once it gets to night time, check out this view. Just uh, zoom out a little bit and look at that. We are surrounded by mountains, and if we just scroll around. This is our colony. It's getting darker and darker. This is what our robots can see, and this is what the people will soon be able to see when we've built our dome and we bring them in, which we'll do shortly. Inconvenient auto save there as I'm scrolling around. But there's our dome. It's going to house everyone very nicely, who we bring in initially. And we would look to put in, in some living quarters to begin with. There we go, 50 out, 58 out of 80 concrete already, and we've found an anomaly. Let's send one of our explorers over there to check it out. Oh, and look, I think our rocket's ready to go. Yep, there we go, 50 out of 50 fuel, so let's close all our sterling generators, because the dust will damage them and cost us uh, a maintenance. There we go, let's send it back to Earth. Research Off you go. Complete. Milestone achieved. So we've achieved a milestone there, and we get some some research bonus. Oh, we've just completed some more research there with the drones and another sector scanned and we found some more water so we're, we're going to thrive here folks. Here we go, 64 out of 80 on the concrete so that's that's very nearly built. We've got a big new space to build in if we want to. And one thing we don't have at the moment is um, alternate power sources so we've got our sterling generators which we can open now that the the problem with dust has gone. And when when the rockets come and go now, we can just send them off um, from these pads. Um, 147 out of 285 of the waste rock. I don't think you can move or, or do anything with that once it's Anomaly full. Animal. Except for maybe fill things in. Oh, check it out. Anomaly analysed and we've gained 1500 research points. So uh, let's check out the, uh, the research. We've got one left and we can go on the next level. I mean might be able to, yeah, you can just research any that that look available, but they do increase um, in costs. You may as well do the cheap ones first and get them. So wind turb turbine upgrade. Drones and rovers move 20% faster. Let's get that one. Allows the clearing of salvage and destroyed buildings. Let's do that. And moxie upgrade. Oh yeah, we we'll definitely want increased op oxygen production by 50% because um, we've got we've got oxygen production up and running already. Wind turbine upgrade, yeah, we'll do that and um, get, get a one-time grant of a billion. Oh, here's the breakthrough technology. Oh god, so this was that prefab um, compression option that came. Oh wow, look at the research cost, it's 10,000 research, so that takes a very long time to, um, to research. But all spires can be ordered as prefabs from Earth. Wow, that would be amazing. So that that's, um, I think, additions to domes. So we'll, we'll certainly get onto that at some point. But we'll, we'll go through the um, the basic stuff stuff first. We've got a full queue. Let's go back to our colony and check out our dome. So we're 71 out of 80 build points. And we're not far away from building our first dome. 
And once we've built that, we, we'll put things, buildings inside of it. So we'll build some living quarters, uh, and we can build things like um, a hydroponics farm to feed them, uh, a diner, an infirmary, and um, and then that's where the game begins. Because wow, you can research loads of breakthroughs and, and, and new buildings and build all sorts and that's where the colony starts so this is it folks this is a fantastic first episode we've got virtually all the concrete we need to build the dome and we're going to be bringing in some colonists in the next episode thank you for joining me we'll see you in the next episode <laughs>